Good morning, my name is Greg Sheehy, president of Extra Tech Plastics. Today I want to introduce to you our new 8-inch concrete form. It is the big brother to our current 6-inch form. The new 8-inch form will hold 8 inches of concrete. This new 8-inch form is drilled with holes to allow for the entry of the rebar and for the concrete to move from panel to panel. The panels come with a peel-off plastic protective sheathing that you peel off after you're done pouring the concrete. Similar to the 6-inch form, these panels also have a tongue and groove and allow the panels to snap together, just like this. Once the panels are together, we introduce the locking spline to lock the panels in place, which gives it extra strength for the day you pour the concrete. It's almost impossible to pull them apart. The splines keep them securely in place. One other feature with this new eight inch concrete form is that we can add two inches of insulation to the inside of the form, which will give you an extra R value of 10 to 12. You slide the pieces in and they're held in with this divider strip. This is all installed at our factory if you require the insulation. After your walls are erected, you want to tie them all together at the top with this sort of a bracket using these metal straps to connect two by fours that are spaced eight inches apart. Once you have the railing put together, you place it over the top of your wall as such. From there, you brace back to the ground, leveling the wall as you go along. Every job that we ship comes with a set of drawings that show the layout of our panels. This will help the construction crew know where to start in which corner and in what sequence to put the panels together. Now that you've learned a little bit about our new 8-inch form, I want to show you a few steps in putting it together. Now one of the first steps as we start putting this wall together is to put a perimeter 2x4 all the way around the outside of what would be the outside of the wall. So you would lay that out by chalking a line, squaring it up, and then fastening the 2x4 down to your footing, as I'll show you now. The next step would be to take some samples we send along that we use as spacers to locate the rebar. The goal would be to place rebar in these two larger openings. And so we place these samples down on the footing to locate those spots. And then we'll drill the holes. Now, once we've drilled the holes for the vertical rebar, we want to clean away the cement powder away from those holes. Now we will install the rebar into the footing. Next step is to take a little bit of silicone and spray the interlocking joints so that the two panels snap together easily. Okay, now we're ready to stand the panel in place. We're gonna lift it up over that short rebar and come into these two areas 
with the rebar in the panel. And then we're going to tip the panel into place. Now the panel's in place. The next step is to drop the vertical rebar down and tie it to the short rebar in the footing. So what we need to do is to raise the panel slightly, put a block underneath, and then drop the rebar down and tie it. Now that we've dropped our vertical rebar down into the panel position, and you can see it's alongside the rebar we put into the footing, we want to tie that together. Once that rebar is tied together, we can lower the panel back down. In some cases, you may want to use a clamp to bring the top of the panels tightly together. And then we will install the locking spline. As such. Now to lock the panels together, we want to install the locking spline. You may use a little bit of silicone spray to help the spline slide down the slot. So now we're going to set another panel, but we're going to do the vertical rebar in an alternate way. We are not going to have rebar in the footing at the beginning. We are going to drop a full length of rebar down inside the panel and get it into the holes and then hammer it down in place from above. So now the trick is to find the rebar, and I just use a crowbar, and I pull it over to my hole. And now you can see it fell in, and now I can lower the panel, and then I'll go up on top and pound them down tight into the foot. The next step is to put in your horizontal rebar. Depending on the lengths you need to use, here I'm using four and six footers and allow for overlap of at least one foot as I go along. So I enter the second hole from the bottom and then I skip three holes and put another layer of rebar in. Now as you enter your horizontal rebar into the hole, you will notice that sometimes you'll hit your vertical rebar. So you have to shake the rebar you have in your hand in order to let it scoot by. As such, all the panels have the drilled holes and they're all drilled exactly the same. So as you put the panels together, all the holes around the entire structure will line up so you'll have no problem inserting the rebar. You notice because the panels have a circle hole, the rebar centers itself, always at the bottom of the circle, thus right in the center of the concrete form. That is important. Another important point I want to stress this morning is that not all layouts come out perfect with our 24 inch panel. So many times we have to make a man-made panel at the shop to finish out the dimension of a wall. So we end up making that man-made panel, thus it's a man-made seam. We show or illustrate that seam by putting this orange tape right on that man-made seam. The reason for that is, is that we want the construction crew to brace that seam very well 
so that the concrete does not break the seam open. So this is how we do that. Put a piece of lumber right over the orange tape from top to bottom and fasten to the 2x4 in the footing and then we'll fasten it up on top to the top 2x4. Once you have your wall up and straight, you want to brace it. So we use this turnbuckle and we fasten this to the end of one of our bracing 2x4s as such. Once I've fastened the turnbuckle to the 2x4 brace, I need to fasten that turnbuckle to the top rail of the wall I'm trying to brace straight. Now you notice that I fastened this turnbuckle where I have a metal bracket connecting the two top rail 2x4s. And that is located right on a seam where two panels come together. So this is a perfect location for putting your bracing 2x4 to level that wall. Once we have the turnbuckle fastened to the top rail of the wall, and in this particular position here, it's in the center of the wall, which is perfect. You want to fasten it to the stake in the ground to hold it secure. Now the final step in straightening the wall is using a 10 millimeter socket head and placing it on the end of the turnbuckle as such. As I work the drill forward, you can easily see how we can adjust the wall. As you can see, we have completed the assembly of the concrete wall panels and installed the locking spline at each joint to secure the panels to each other. The bracing is also finished. Notice the bracing at the top of the walls and at the corners. This is very important that these forms are braced properly for the pouring of the cement. We have added the horizontal and vertical rebar to the forms to add strength to the 4,000 pound PSI cement that we're pouring. You will notice white pipes sticking up out of the wall. These are raceways to allow us to run electrical wire and water lines to this underground structure. There is one outlet for the release of water out of the sub pump. The pouring of the cement should be done in lifts of four to five feet at a time around the entire wall area. Then lift and go around again, adding another four or five feet of cement until you reach the top of the wall. Notice the cement is going through a plastic funnel to eliminate spillage as much as possible. As we are pouring the cement, we will use rubber hammers to pound on the side wall of the form to help settle the cement. You may also vibrate the cement. Once the forms are full, you will add anchor bolts to hold down the top plate for the next phase of construction. After 24 to 48 hours, depending on weather conditions, you may remove the form bracing. On this project, we will be adding a concrete roof, so we will not quite fill the forms to the very top, but stay about three to four inches down to allow for the cement from the roof to flow and lock into the wall forms and vertical rebar, making a superior joint. Once the cement hardens, you will have a solid, load-bearing, maintenance-free concrete wall that will not rot or corrode and is completely water and termite-proof. The forms can come in three colors, white, beige, and gray. The forms are made to your specifications using either six or eight inch thick panels. These forms can also be insulated. These concrete wall forms can be used in car and truck washes, dairy parlors and robot rooms, hog and poultry barns, food processing plants, cheese and milk plants, clean rooms, laboratories, basements, and underground structures, government facilities, restrooms, wastewater treatment plants, and swimming pools. 
Well, we have finished pouring the 11 yards of cement into the ExtraTech concrete wall form. And after letting it dry for a day, we have removed the bracing. You can see that the forms are nice and straight with no pillowing. The walls are now completely finished and waterproof. The next step is to pour the basement floor and add the top deck. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have learned more about the ExtraTech Stay in Place concrete wall forms. Please call us at 888-818-0118 to discuss your building project and talk to our friendly staff. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.